Hello everybody and welcome to another one of the Roll20 tutorials with me, Valeric. So um, today what we're going to go over is um, how it is that you're going to make a map for, for your players to, to, to have their combats or whatever the case may be on. I know you've probably watched like whether it be a stream or a YouTube vlog or whatever the case may be and you're like, wow, these maps look amazing. They, they really kind of like blow my mind away. How do I make a map that looks that great? And honestly, there's many different approaches for you to be able to do this. And I, I mean, some of them are just very, very complicated. They take a, a long time to put you know, a lot of effort into. And that's great. I actually do that sometimes myself. And other times it can be uh, a little bit quicker. There's some shortcuts that you can take that still has a pretty darn good looking map uh, that, that, you know, nobody even really notices the flaws built into it. And that's what we're going to go over right now is building those uh, quicker and easier maps because you're just getting started with Roll20. So again, this is being done with a Roll20 free account. And without further ado, let's uh, let's head on over. So as soon as you load into Roll20, you're going to pop up into the screen right here. It's your home screen, recent games, whatever the case may be. And we have the one setup that we did last time. So it's going to be lessons. We're going to join that game. Now again, with a free account, there is a little bit of a lag to, to load onto this. It's um, about a 15 second wait. I actually just rolled onto this not that long ago. So that wait was... Um, kind of like I had already done my cooldown time so um, it happened a little bit quicker for me than it usually would so expect that 15 second wait time when you're loading in with the free account all right so immediately when you load in you're gonna see things that you'd seen from before over on the chat window off to the side anything that's happened up in chat is going to stay there unless you choose to clear the chat another time so you'll see your map the map that we had left behind before it's just a simple white map with the gray lines on top of it it's just a start map but what we're going to do today, by clicking this top bar right, right here, drops down what we have. I actually went ahead and made an example map, one that we're going to make right now. So you look at this map, and it's, you know, it's not bad. Realistically, I mean, you had some bad guys on here. You had some sort of combat happening. It's not a bad-looking map. Jump it up to 100%. I mean, you have a whole bunch of different areas, some brush that people can hide behind. For some reason, some fire thing in the middle. Whatever. So how is it that we're going to go ahead and just make this map right now for your players? Okay, so um, we're going to pull down that toolbar page and off to the far left over here, we're going to press create new page. That's going to instantly make a new map for you. It's going to have the generic settings set into it. Those generic settings being page size 25 by 25, backgrounds white. It's going to have the color of gray with the 5 by 5 squares. These are all going to be the basics that load in and you can change those as you'd like every time you make a map if you want anything different from that but we're fine with the basics as it is and we're going to go right on over to it now once we're in this map i'm going to back up a little bit just so i can see what i'm working with so i can actually see my whole square um let's see and I'll drop this down to 40 percent so it's going to look a little different on everybody's screen but one of the things you'll notice is it often will add a bunch of extra squares to the bottom right there those squares are to, you know, this, it just kind of like fills in the gap. I don't know why it happens, but don't worry about it. It's not going to affect um, you or making your map or anything like that. As soon as you zoom in, you'll be able to see them pop away. All right. You're going to go over here to where your assets are. You're going to pop into your assets window, your library. It's the art library. It's the first tab over from your chat window. And you're going to type in things that you're looking for. I'm just going to type in a simple word, tile. Sure. Why not? Tile is going to pop up a whole bunch of different options that are here for you. A lot of them come from the uh, the Ginny, which I think is pretty cool. It's an awesome website if you happen to be uh, somebody who pays for an account over there and can make wonderful things on that site. But we're actually going to go ahead and use that. Now, right off the bat, um, I'm going to grab this one right here. I'm going to pull it. I'm going to drag it onto the map. And you can see it popped up as a single square unit. That's actually should sort of trigger off in your mind. If you're building a map and it's you pull something in and it's only one square that it fills in, that means you're actually not building a map right now. You're off on the left-hand side in your objects and tokens screen. You want to be on your maps and backgrounds screen. Now, if you watch, if I switch to maps and backgrounds and make it that opaque because we're worried about the things that are going to be behind it, you grab that same exact thing and drag it on top. It's going to take up a two by two, okay, or ten feet by ten feet if you're playing D and D. It's going to take up a much larger square. So. We're going to delete this one here because we just don't need it anymore. And we're going to hang out in the maps area with the square that we want. Now, to make this map the way I want it to look, I'm actually going to simply take this. I'm going to grab the box. I'm going to drag it so it takes up about half the size of the screen as it is. 
So we're going to just go ahead and copy and paste. Copy and paste on this is the same as it is with any text document. Uh, Control or Command C or Control or Command V to paste. And then bam, there you go. You have another one. Right off the bat, you're going to see that there's a, uh, this two squares do not line up perfectly. One is slightly larger than the other. That's fine. Use it to your advantage. Make things a little bit unique. All right, there we go. Now we have a map that's kind of um, already starting to come together. I'm actually going to fiddle with this a little bit. There's no reason everything has to be exactly the same. So let's see, turn that one there like that. Turn this one. Mm. Uh, why don't we go ahead and make this one go fully upside down. Oops. Don't want to get to that quick bit. We'll grab this one right here. We'll turn this one 90 degrees over this way. And I have made a mistake on the sizing. A little smaller, a little bigger. Okay, now we're going to go down here and we're going to paste again. We'll put this one over here and we'll paste a fourth time and we're going to pull that one and turn it slightly like this. Once again, I have to make it slightly smaller on that angle. Everything's going to snap to grid unless you tell it not to. Everything will snap to the correct grid size. So there it is. There's your map and it's a basic form where you have all of your four different squares put onto the map right there for you. And you can see I kind of have like a little mountainous region starting to appear right here. Got the trees kind of laid out all about everywhere. So things starting to come together a little great. <clears throat> so with this map set up as it is, we can now add a little bit of, you know, um, flora to it to make it stand out and not look like four tiles just kind of thrown together. So I'm going to come over here and just type the word tree. Super simple. Just grab the word tree, pick out a couple of trees that I think kind of match the coloring of the map a little bit, you know, a little bit fun. So come over here and I'm immediately going to grab that tree and plop it right on top of one of the other trees that I have over here. That way I can try to cover up a little bit exactly what it is that I'm trying to do. Um, again, this is just because I'm making a quick and dirty map. So, you know, I'm trying to make that happen. Now, look at this over here. You see how I'm trying to grab this, this, this tree and put it on top of the other one, but it just keeps snapping to place. Oh, so frustrating. Well, what you can do actually is right click on that, on that image go over to the advanced area and click is drawing now this is going to have a lot of effects if you're dealing with tokens and whatnot but we're dealing with a map for now so this is fine is drawing allows you to move it however you want you can resize it however you want it's not going to hold to a certain form it's not going to snap to grid in any way so you can kind of grab that and drop it right over on top of the tree you're trying to cover up and you know i kind of like these trees so why don't we do two more of them we'll just grab them and, and throw them about in different areas there we go. I'm also going to make this one a drawing. There we are right there. And we'll start grabbing a couple different types of trees. Oh, this is a cute tree. Put this right over here. Copy. Paste a few times. I usually do that. I'll, I'll paste the, the same thing a few different times just to have it on hand so I can move it around as needed. And don't try to make it look symmetric. Don't try to be like, oh, the same number in every area or spaced out or try to cover up the same different uh, uh, parts of the map. Uh, space it out, change it up a little bit, have some fun with it. If you make it too obvious that you're trying to cover things up, it'll be obvious that you're trying to cover things up. So once again, just try to have fun with it. At this point in time, you are literally just building a map the same way you would be if you weren't uh, doing it a quick and dirty way. So have a little fun, place your trees about here and there wherever you want them. There we are. And I'm going to leave that little spot in the middle for that fire to happen because we've done that beforehand. Come up here and I'll type the word. We'll say fire. Fire is a good keyword. You know, a ton of stuff pops up, whether it be free assets right here, pro assets if you happen to have them. Or I think this is the same one I used last time. I'm going to drag and drop that in the middle right there. And actually, it's kind of funny. One of the things I had noticed is with this map, uh, I actually grabbed a slightly different um, uh, image than I grabbed last time. This image actually is not the exact same. And so this little area here is not actually snapping to the grid in a way that is covering up those white lines between the, the maps. And you can actually see it. It's kind of glaring. If you look uh, right down here in this area, you can see these white lines that appear in the middle. So I'm actually going ahead and hiding one map underneath the other one. Now, how is it that I'm able to so easily hide one under the other one? Well, um, on top of, you know, is drawing, so I could pull only a little bit over, one of the things you need to know is that when images are placed onto the map, 
they are always going to be placed on top of every image behind it. So if you're familiar with the Z index, that's like uh, different layers or just layer layering in general, the newest item will always be on top of the other ones unless you tell it to go otherwise. So I knew that this one right here to the top left was uh, on top of this one. So I just dragged that one slightly underneath it and so on until I got every single one of them hidden underneath the layer that was above it. So we got rid of those little white lines. All right, over here we had the little fire icon. Grab that. Drop him over here. Oh, not working. He's drawing. Put that right there. And voila, it was that simple. I mean, we did this in uh, less than 10 minutes. We got a basic map that you can use and, and throw all sorts of combats on. I mean, one of the cool things about up top here, and I mentioned it beforehand, archiving, is you can do something here like, you can name this uh, simple, uh, we'll call it planes, battle so simple planes battle it's a map that you're going to use tomorrow night when you're playing with your friends okay that's great not a problem but then you can also archive it by pressing settings pressing archive page and then you have one archive page and that'll stack up so if you have 30 let's say 30 archive pages or whatever there and you can pull them up whenever you want to by clicking that choosing the map clicking restore that's funny the uh the title didn't stick Let's try that again simple planes battle okay there you go so you have the example over here and you have this one over here and you can see they're not identical but they're pretty darn similar you know you have a map there combat can happen uh, one of the other things I had thrown on here beforehand I think when I uh, did tree before I grabbed some like broken branches a little bit of you know some of that PCs could use as cover turn that into a drawing definitely you don't want to snap to grid for that one uh, copy and paste that a few times. Bring a couple of broken trees around. You know, have a little bit of fun with it. And uh, every bit more that you want to add to it is just going to make the map a little bit better. And like I said, if you want to archive that map and save it for the future, when you pull it up in the future, one of the cool things you can always do is clear away the dead bodies from the battle before, take away that fire piece because that was important before and add entirely different pieces on there you can make it ever evolving it doesn't have to be the same every time but now at least you have this easy set template that you can continue growing with when i say continue growing you can even in the future go as far as to make your map larger oh 25 isn't going to be big enough for what i have in mind for this session so i actually want it to be 35 by 35 and you can see here there is more for you to grow with so much more map for you to expand on and make this bigger for one reason or another so anyways this is the whole point of this tutorial was to show you how to make a very simple map and there it is right there so i hope this uh made things easy for you if you uh, ever need to find me reach out to me whatever it is you can always find me in the all the uh the stuff in the description box below if you could subscribe to me that'd be great i'd super appreciate it but otherwise have yourselves a great day thank you so much it was a lot of fun Bye.